The first two parts of Siegfried Sassoon's autobiographical account of the First World War were published in superb editions by the Limited Editions Club that have previously been reviewed on this channel. Sadly, the LEC never published the final volume, but the Folio Society did complete the trilogy, and so here I will be looking at their 1974 edition of Sherston's Progress. We receive a fairly basic slipcase covered in buff paper with a texture reminiscent of animal hide. Within is a volume of modest proportions bound in buff cloth. The boards are lithographically printed with a wraparound design in black and brown by the illustrator. It depicts Sleepford War Hospital, where our story begins. The title is blocked on the spine against a brown background and the top edge of the text block is stained in a rust colour. The book has a sewn binding with red and yellow headband and plain salmon coloured end papers. Overall, it's a fairly unremarkable presentation, although that wraparound design is quite nice. The text is printed in 12 point barbu type with chambord display on special smooth book wove paper. The paper is nice enough and would feel familiar to owners of modern folio editions printed on that ubiquitous abbey wove. As was standard for earlier folio editions, this book was printed by letterpress, although a 1993 reissue was reproduced photographically. The typographic plan of the book feels a little dated to me, and more reflective of the edition's 1970s origins than the narrative's late war setting. Illustrations were provided by John Lawrence in the form of black and white line drawings reproduced from line blocks. There are 10 illustrations in all, each with the look of a field sketch that captures the humdrum routine of life away from the front, or the similar monotony of life at it. One thing I appreciated about these figurative images is that they locate their subjects convincingly within their three-dimensional environment. This imbues those scenes with a lively quality and makes it easy to imagine the hustle and bustle in the background. There's no introduction in this edition, we jump right into the story. Ostensibly fictional, Sassoon's trilogy was actually autobiographical. In fact, by this third volume almost all pretense of this being fiction had been abandoned, and it reads like a personal memoir of the author rather than of his invented protagonist. The story opens as that protagonist searches for meaning from his enforced stay at the aforementioned war hospital. Eventually, meaning comes in the form of a return to the front line told in an epistolary fashion through a series of diary entries. Overall, the book strikes a more philosophical note than did the visceral memoirs of an infantry officer. The result is a book less powerful, but nevertheless essential in completing Sassoon's important document of the First World War.